You have to kind of talk toward that, but don't make it obvious. <laughs> What's going on Average Joes and welcome back to another episode of Booze and Books again. It's been a while. So this episode was almost Booze, Books, and a Baby, but he is just on the other side of that wall taking a nap, so be quiet. You might be able to hear his sound machine right now, but we're just going to try and see what happens. Maybe we will bring him to record and we'll see what happens. But <clears throat> today we're going to talk about Realm of the Otherlings, the first trilogy in... Well, the Robin and the Otherlings, um, Robin Hobb series. So that is the Assassins, uh, what is it, Assassin's Apprentice, Assass Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. I just finished this series, this trilogy. You finished it last year. So I finally caught up so we can finally talk about it. And today we, we're going to kind of, it's going to be a slight review, but it's also going to be things to know before you read the Realm of the Otherlings. Um, what's the specific trilogy called. I think the Rumble of the Elements, I feel like is this, or Farseer Trilogy. Yeah, Farseer, Farseer Trilogy. That's it. Rumble of the Elements is the big world. Farseer Trilogy. So I guess the first thing to know is it's called the, <laughs> shit, what's it called? The Farseer Trilogy? It's called the Farseer Trilogy. <laughs> and the big world is the Realm of the Elderlings. Starting off good. Um, I didn't know that it was called the Realm of the Elderlings until I started looking at reviews of the books like today. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's like all of the trilogies when they line up. I have up no idea. In that world, which I guess reading it now makes the sense. Makes makes sense. Um, I guess we'll see how Elderlings fit into everything else. We've been doing a lot of the booze part. No. <laughs> mm -mm. So, okay. Things to know for Realm of the Elderlings. I'll start, and that is that it is first person POV, and it's only one POV. So, <clears throat> this isn't like I need, I guess some people need to know this. I think I would have probably read it sooner if I, if I knew it. Because I've come to realize that I like first-person POV. I like being in the person's head. I like going through their decision-making. <clears throat> I think it helps with flawed and dumb characters. When you're sitting on the sideline and you're watching people, when you're people watching, you see somebody do something dumb, you're just like, man, hindsight, that person's dumb. Why did they just do that? But if you're in their head and seeing, going through what they're doing, you are be like, you know what? I see what they were trying to do. I get it. It was dumb, but I get it. Uh, so I think first-person POV is fine for me. Single person for all the entire thing might be a little, get a little old for some people versus switching off, having multiple perspectives, but I still like first person. I enjoy first person as well. I like knowing what they're thinking, why they're making the decisions that they're making. Um, and I think it gives you more in depth uh, to the story. Uh, however, I also think that um, when you see the different points of views from other Per persons in the book, it gives a broader view of the book as well. So it can go either way, but I genuinely enjoy like uh, the getting into Fitz's head and knowing what he's thinking, why he's making those decisions, and what he's doing. Yes, I was distracted with making this better. And um, it, it makes you like his decisions that you're like, oh, why did you do that? It makes you understand kind of why he did that, even yeah. if you don't agree. Which, yeah, like which happens a lot. I was a little, I was a little scared <laughs> because you kept on telling me, and like as you were reading it, I know you were like so frustrated how dumb he was and had oh, all the mistakes so he made. I was so angry with some of the decisions he made. But I didn't feel that way because I was like in his head, and I was like, you know what? I can see where he's coming from. I can see why he did that, and like it's either not totally his fault or um, I understood how he got there. So I never understood how he that did that. Bad. I mean, there's definitely plenty of times where I'm just like, that was dumb, dude. You shouldn't have done that. But, you know, you do you. I didn't really care that much uh, that I was too frustrated. Not, I mean, there's definitely times where I was. It was just like, why the hell did that happen? But there's also, grand, in the grand scheme of things, things that happened toward the end where I'm just like, this was from Robin Hobbs' point of perspective. Why the hell did she have that happen? But that's something completely different and spoilers anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing to know. This is fantasy, and... Some would call it high fantasy, yes? Yes, it's high fantasy because I believe it's not that I'm all knowledgeable. It's high fantasy because it's its, its own world that, yes. they, that they created. Right. Um, there's not much magic, though. Most fantasy you're going to want and see and think about magic. There's not much magic in this. There is some. Um, the skill... Skill? Yep, the skill and the wit. 
Scale and the Wit, yeah. They are, they're very subtle, mm -hmm. but I like them a lot. It's cool because you see so many fantasy now that it's like elemental magic, like fire and electric or, you know, moving things like um, telekinetic, whatever, m magic. And like that sort of epic magic, but then there's the skill and the wit, which is more of like m mental magic and like manipulation or communication. That's basically all it is, manipulation or communication. And it's a very subtle, which is pretty cool because it's subtle to everybody else. Not everybody not know about it. You, you might be there might be rumors about who does it, but you don't. You're not, it's not like blatantly going through. Oh, that's a fire wielder or something like that. So it's cool and it's not in your face. Some people might not like. I mean, it's just it's, again, it's good to know because you're not going to go into this expecting all kinds of magic happening. It's just going to be a little bit of manipulation here, there. Now it does grow as you as you go, just like most fancy does. It's going to get more and more. Um, there's going to be. It's going to be more just dynamic i guess as you go through it but it's not something that you should go in thinking expecting a ton of magic yes um and then the difference between the um wit and the, what was skill. the other skill magic um it was very interesting to the differences and like how people <clears throat> saw them even though it wasn't like the differences in the magic wasn't they weren't very different but the way people saw them was very different. And so that was kind of interesting too because it kind of brought in politics. Yeah, and how people perceive the different ones right. and how some are thought to be gone or shouldn't be done. And I guess just how maybe in the past how people have been shaped by it. Right, almost like uh, good magic and dirty magic. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, um, which was <clears throat> interesting in and of itself, which is very... It's like high class and low class yeah. too. Exactly, yeah. So uh, seeing like the high class versus low class uh, versions of these magics and how people perceive them and um, the differences and what they were, even though they were so similar but different, it was it was very interesting and it, it absolutely shaped the politics of the book. So the next one is there's not much assassinations. There's, um, there, there is attempted assassination. <laughs> I can literally think of one time there was an assassination. Uh, attempted. I think there were a couple of attempted in the first book. Maybe that too, but like seriously. So assassin is in each of the books. He is training to be an assassin. I don't even know how many people he even successfully assassinates. He's so not a good assassin. He's kind of a failure in that regard. He does good things other way, other places, but like, I don't know. It's just it's not very aptly named, I guess, for it to be an assassin. It's like they. Which I guess is kind of cool because you're not you're you anticipate one thing but it's doing another. Yeah, like it, you're just expecting the book to go to one direction, but I guess just that that's just kind of a representation of life too. You're like you're training, you're going, you're you think of college. If you're going to college for one thing, you're going to graduate from college and you might do something else that you're not expecting. It's kind of how kind of how it goes. Like he's training to be something, but he ends up taking a different path in a certain way, which is you know real in, in a sense real. So very human. But that's something to know is that if you're expecting this assassination book where people are just getting assassinated or different ways to assassinate, that's not going to happen because, like I said, I think there is literally one assassination that I can even think of. And I think, like I like I said in the first book, I think there were two attempted assassinations. I think there for, were yeah, two. I remember I remember an attempted one. And book two, I think I remember there actually being one, but that's like that's it. Yeah. Or I think he actually does do assassinations, but it's not talked about in the book. It's more of like a, hey, I was assigned this. We're just going to gloss over because it doesn't fit with the regular story anyway. So if you're looking for an assassination, this is not the book for you. <laughs> I think I'm going to want you to step down just to see magic, movie magic. All right, get back up here. All right, <clears throat> the next one. I didn't feel human down there. I felt like a... a I don't subhuman, know. yeah. You... Subhuman, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> This, this one is kind of more for me and people like that read like how I do or something, but it's at times it's long, slow paced. And since you're only in one POV, that means you only experience things as Fitz is experiencing things. So if he's experienced something for a very long time, like traveling around or doing something, then you're pretty much with him the entire time. And it, those times can feel slow and long and just like, okay, can, can we can we get to the next thing? Can we get to the next part? Cause like you're taking forever to do this or you keep talking and reminiscing about this and like, I kind of just want to get past this. So, but like for every time that that happened, 
there were still nuggets of times where I like I, I it was interesting what was going on. It felt some things felt like important in the long run. Not everything, but it still I was still into it. It wasn't just like I was completely bored. It wasn't a slog. But there's still gonna be longer, slower parts where you're just stuck in whatever the heck he's doing, wondering like, okay, we're supposed to be doing this, but you're you're doing this other stuff right now. Some people are definitely gonna think it's a slog. Um, because you get stuck in his head and you get stuck in his moments, and some of his moments are very <clears throat> long winded. Uh, and the things that he is harping on aren't necessarily incredibly important uh in the long run um but it gives you his perspective and like what he's going through and kind of like the angst that he's feeling and and i think in the whole story view it's very in my opinion it was important to see that but not necessarily uh didn't really push the story forward so yes the way that I read it, I felt that it was important, but not everybody would feel it was important kind of thing. Yeah, so it'll be <clears throat> kind of subjective to how you read, how you like your stories. If you like a little slower development, then this is definitely be good for you. Uh, if you like a little more fast-paced, at times you might find it a slog, but there's still yeah. going to be some nuggets that'll be okay. Um, kind of a B to that is... Uh, some of the romance or like love sections. I mean, uh, not like love romance. I, Sometimes it was longer, too much. It was longer winded. I think in it was um, repetitive. To me, it was repetitive, especially in book two. It just kept on like him and the girl that he was with. They just it was like a cyclical cycle. Like they fought about the same thing over and over again. It's it got a little bit redundant and old. Those parts were unnecessary. And I I said this in one of the discords and in, in one of the chats. And I was like, you know what? After the book two, I was like, you know, the love stuff was just doing too much. There was too much going on, and people said. Oh, we'll just you know wait till the end of the next book and, and things will make sense. It really still didn't. There was no reason for all of that to happen. Honestly, it was even it could after the third book it could have even been trimmed down even more. It was just too repetitive, too redundant, like unnecessary. I see some of the ne necessity to some of it, but not all of it. It didn't have to be as long winded as it was. Yeah, it had to be there, but it didn't have to be as long winded. Those were probably my least favorite parts. Because they were just frustrating and like, okay, we've been here before. Okay, you're dumb. Okay, she's dumb. Let's just move on. Yes. Uh, and the next one, I'm going to let you talk about this because it's kind of a 1A, 1B. But you you brought, brought this one up. I didn't feel it as as much at first, but it's a, one, one good to bring up. Uh, so I felt like um, throughout all three books, it, you could definitely see that there was a depressing vibe. Um he often failed at many well he pretty much always failed and uh at everything he tried it was kind of disheartening to see him fail over and over and over and over again um however it was very human um absolutely human and so it was kind of a segue to the next one um he's not your usual hero uh, character, right? He fails. He is constantly failing at everything. And so you can kind of look at him and you kind of can kind of relate to what he's going through and what's happening because he's failing and you failed in life and he's failing in life and you're like, okay, we're going to make it through. We're going to figure it out. It's going to happen. And so you kind of like, for me, I kind of started rooting for him. Like you can do this, you can make it. Um, and a lot of people I think will, could kind of see this as very depressing and they could kind of see it as um just maybe not interested in what's going on because he's so down on himself a lot uh but i found myself rooting for him rooting for the underdog trying to get him to like yes you can do it you can make it through this it's, i know it's hard but you can do it kind of thing uh that's kind of how i saw it he was definitely conflicted at times to for duty and like um, selfishness himself. So that was cool to see because it's kind of a gray area. He wasn't always motivated to do what he needed to do, but he at, at, at the end, mo mostly at the end, he did. Um, but he still made a ton of mistakes, and I, I, and I guess that he's always trying to do what's right, but he makes a ton of mistakes and like is impulsive along the way, and you just. You know what he's trying to get at to at, get at, but he's just dumb and it's like, well, that was that was a dumb decision. You you did that, but that's cool, you know. And then again, he repeats the same mistake sometimes too, 
but it's 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 fine because you know that's just kind of the the human side of it. Yeah. So basically, what you need to know is he's not your typical hero, right? He's not <clears throat> going to get through all of his trials looking like an amazing human being. You're going to look at him and you're going to be like, "That was stupid." I can't believe you did that. That was a dumb decision. Even though you're in his head and you're seeing what he's thinking, you're like, why? Why? Because that's how I felt. Um, but at the end of the story, you're like, okay, you're very human. You are so human and I can relate to some of the decisions that you're making and why you made these decisions. Any final thoughts on the Rebel? I genuinely enjoyed the trilogy. Um, I had been talking, trying to talk him into reading it for a while so that we could kind of discuss what was happening uh, because I really, really liked it. Um, some of the things that we didn't touch on that I genuinely enjoyed, I liked the, uh, uh, what, not the Joker, what was he? The Fool. The Fool. The Fool. Fool's, I love the Fool. Fool is really cool. I, I really yeah. enjoyed his character. His character, in my opinion, is one of the redeeming characters in the book. I loved his character. Um, and then I love a book that you can genuinely hate the bad guy. Yes. And I one of the hated the bad guy. Most hateable bad guys. I cannot tell you how many times I was reading the book and I looked at him and I was like, I hate this guy. I don't know if I can finish reading this book because I hate this guy so much. So, unfortunately, I just, as in post, I realized that uh, my microphone died right at this point. There's about two and a half to three minutes left of us talking. I don't even remember what the last point was, but maybe we'll have to cover it another time. But, yeah, so my microphone died, and I'm not even going to try and dub over voice over what the heck we were talking about. That just might be a little too ridiculous. But I hope you enjoy this one. Oh, 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 oh,